so if pregnancy is considered like a medical condition potentially because your immune system is really dampened in pregnancy um, and they've actually advised pregnant women who are healthcare workers to maybe not see patients directly in a clinical space right now for that reason and it's absolutely really terrifying the idea that um, I'm set to go back into the clinical space and start my clinical rotations in June and I'll be pregnant then I'll be like seven to eight months pregnant and the idea that you know, I might be putting myself and um, baby at risk is really scary, especially if we don't have the proper amount of equipment to be able to use. That's an interesting dichotomy to be the doctor in some cases and then to be the patient in some cases. It kind of seems like yeah. it could be a little bit of both right now. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, um, I'm really grateful to have a medical background, especially at this time where information is um, really, like, we need more information about a lot of this, and I think people out there in, in different organizations and research organizations are doing a great job of trying to inform pregnant women of, like, what their specific risks are, but we just don't know, and I think that's the scariest part. When I went, went in for my um, ultrasound just last week, so I've been canceling a lot of my routine appointments because I've been able to use things like telehealth with my own OB provider, my obstetrics doctor, um, and that's been wonderful, and she's really been guiding me through a lot of this stuff, but I had to go in for an ultrasound because you can't do that virtually, and it was actually kind of terrifying because um, I tr my husband, try, Arvin, tried to come with me and wear a mask, um, even though we've been socially separating ourselves from one another because he's at high risk being a healthcare worker and a, a surgeon himself, but he tried to come to the appointment just because it's an exciting time for both of us. It's our first pregnancy and we wanted to, we were finding out the biological sex and we both wanted to be there and he wasn't allowed to enter um, even the waiting room or the actual exam room. And so from a patient perspective, it's heartbreaking, right? To not be able to share this with your loved ones. I would have also loved to have my parents there or my sister there. Um, and, you know, just a few months ago, I was, right, when, before this outbreak happened. Um, and so, you know, my husband waited downstairs in the car and I texted him and FaceTimed him when we found out and made sure everything was going okay and baby was healthy. From a provider perspective, I completely understand, you know, from a public health and medical perspective, I get why we're not allowed to have a visitor right now and how that helps with infection control. But it's an interesting time to be able to feel the effects very personally. Find out you're pregnant, probably one of the happiest days, and especially since it's your first kid too. And you find out this, you know, huge milestone in your life, and then COVID hits. What made you guys decide that it would be safest to shelter in place separately, at least for the time being? I think we are so used to reading like medical literature and papers and things coming out of the places that were hardest hit, like specifically China and Italy. And the data on pregnancy and risks to both a pregnant woman and um, the in utero transmission to baby was just so lacking. And so as we started thinking more and reading more about what was actually happening and potentially knowing that this is a very unknown risk and pregnant women are at higher risk for other uh, respiratory illnesses like the flu or like SARS, I think we, we were putting it off a little bit because this is something that we just wanted to enjoy being in the same place together, of course. Um, and I think it became clear that we needed to have these diff more difficult discussions. I know we're not the only couple or family in healthcare to be able to do this. And, you know, we share um, like a two bedroom apartment, which doesn't have enough space for one of us to actually like shelter in place in a basement or a garage or anything like that. Um, we can't really separate like our, our living space. And so I think we just came to the more difficult conclusion that we'd have to do that um, just to prevent if one of us, you know, started having symptoms and we thought that that would be too late. So we tried to be proactive about it. 